I have seen IFC Shutter Azrael, and here are my thoughts about what I liked, what I didn't like, and how I felt like the movie really should have gone. I didn't get to say it in the beginning. Spoiler alert, guys. I will be spoiling stuff in this movie, so if you have not seen it, go back and watch it and come back to this video. Sorry. So for my opening statement, will a mute Samara weaving battling demonic beings get you rallying behind her, or will the movie's twist and ending wish you'd been taken in the rapture? Let's find out. So first, let's talk about the premise and some biblical history here. So um, the movie kind of starts off with, uh, you know, kind of laying it out for you about what has happened. But many years after the rapture, the remaining human survivors on Earth are plagued by the burn ones, demonic humanoid creatures who are drawn to and prey upon human flesh and blood. Azrael, Samara Weaving and her lover Kenan ousted from a forest dwelling cult who believe that speech is a sin and who have surgically removed their vocal cords to see speaking are hunted down to be sacrificed to the burned ones. Those who are not familiar with the rapture in Christianity, the rapture is the belief that during the end of times, both living and dead believers will ascend into heaven to meet Jesus. The people who are left behind suffer through a seven year period of tribulation, which is wars, plagues, all kinds of suffering. And there's a big bell that involves the antichrist and then Armageddon. Uh, Azrael is not mentioned in the Bible, um, but is known as the angel of death in other religions and mythologies. The name means help of God, though. So I guess in this instance, God is on her side, sort of, as we'll see. <laughs> so let's get to it. So I did want to bring up Samara Weaving, um, just kind of like I talked about in my trap video. If you haven't seen it, go watch it. Um, I'm a big fan of Samara Weaving. Um, I feel like she's kind of become well established in the horror genre. Uh, with movies such as like the babysitter franchise for netflix the ready or not now franchise not they're gonna make another one uh with her, and her appearance in scream six so for me this is a must watch just because she was in it so looking forward to ready or not too but uh i i was impressed with the lack of dialogue for i i didn't really see this coming because i didn't actually read the premise for Azrael. again I, I watched it mainly because it was a horror movie for one and it had samara weaving in it so didn't even read the premise but i was impressed with the lack of dialogue the movie was still able to tell the story and convey the fear it was trying to instill with the burn ones and the cult overall the scenes where we get to hear nature in the background especially it helps i feel like with the overall scenery of certain scenes and it's kind of like kind of puts in perspective like wow like I cannot hear this person talk. They're not saying anything, but I can hear nature behind me. And it just kind of like adds to that. It just, you know what I mean? That kind of thing. Um, this has been done before in another thriller for 2016's Hush, you know, something similar. And I like that movie as well of what it was able to achieve with very little dialogue. All right. So what I didn't like, because other than Samara Weaving and that aspect of it, mm, a lot of what I didn't like is what I wanted to talk about. <laughs> and then the ending and how I felt like the movie should have gone. So I was jiving with the story overall. Don't get me wrong. And how Azrael was going to survive the cold and the burn ones. But then this is where they lost me. Some guy drives up in a Dodge Ram who was speaking just fine and is playing music. And you're like, what the heck is this? I it's sort of the twist in the movie to possibly explain that the cult and the burn ones maybe are smaller in scope and not affecting the entire world but you're just like what i didn't like that and i could have just done without that that twist did not work for me i'm sorry and if i'm if i'm misinterpreting it by any means guys at me in the comments nicely be nice but i just i'm like what is this what is this and the guy was easily killed so like what was the purpose of all this so in saying that let's talk about the ending so during the movie we see a pregnant woman named miriam and the whole time I was thinking she was going to give birth to the Antichrist. Because if this is the rapture and this girl's pregnant, the baby she's going to have ain't going to be no baby. Um, again, as I said, if it's the rapture, that just would make sense to me. So what I got a little confused on is that Miriam gives birth to the baby. And she is terrified that the baby is a goat-like creature, which is, again, more likely the Antichrist. And then sacrifices herself. Uh, at first I thought, well, why did she not expect that to happen? I thought maybe the cult was for the Antichrist because they were sacrificing people to the burn ones. So, you know what I mean? It seemed like that was where they were going with that. But I'm guessing that maybe Miriam was thinking that the baby would be a positive for the cult. Like a way out, like almost a savior, like to save them from the rapture. Um, 
So I guess that's what they thought the baby was going to be because the baby probably could talk or I don't, I don't know what, what was going to happen. But and then it seems that maybe it was a punishment from God and or the devil using Miriam for his bidding to have the Antichrist come, you know, to fruition. So um, anyways, then Azrael picks up the baby and the burn ones well as she holds the baby and she kind of like smirks a little bit, you know, kind of like, oh, I guess I'm taking care of the Antichrist baby now. Um, I just didn't know how to take that ending. I was like, all right. She spent the majority of the movie trying to escape the cult and the burn ones only to now be with them. Kind of like their new leader of like maybe the cult. Now the cult's been taken out. Like now she's like their new leader. Like she's like a part of their team. I, I don't know. That just didn't seem to really work for me. Again, at me in the comments if I misinterpreted that, but that's kind of what I got. Um, so this is what I feel like the movie should have been like. And, and you can let me know your pins down in the comments down below. But I would have definitely cut the guy in the Dodge who can talk for one. Doesn't need to be a part of the movie at all. But then I would have kept the suspense going with Azrael having to use the baby goat as a bargaining chip for her escape from the burn ones. And then possibly killing it to not have the Antichrist come to be. You know, saving the world in some ways. Um, the twist could have been, though, that she is able to escape but finds herself meeting others who are trying to escape the burn ones in another area and are dealing with the same problem of trying to survive, but also having pregnancies end up being attempts for the Antichrist to come into the world. It would have just kind of added maybe more overall lore to the movie, which is what I like about horror movies sometimes. Expanded on it beyond where it started, you know, making it more larger in scope, and it left it open for a sequel, you know? Um, she's our heroine in the movie, but then at the end, you're like, she's a part of the problem. I don't, I don't understand all that. So I feel like that would have been more of where I was going to kind of go. And, you know, I think that would have been a movie I would have championed more. So in saying all that, my final thoughts and rating for Azrael. Azrael starts off as a unique horror movie survival film, but a certain scene and confusing ending leaves the movie feeling misleading and with an identity crisis. That's what I give it. So in saying all that, I give it 2.5 out of 5 Samara Weavings. So if you've seen Ezrael, it should be on Shudder right now, I think is where it came off, and of course on digital. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. What do you think, what'd you think of the movie? Um, I thought the burned ones were cool. They were interesting characters, but um, those are my main thoughts about the movie. And if you liked my version of how the movie should have ended, I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. That's it for this video, guys. If you enjoyed, hit the like button. If you're more like this, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys next time on The Mashup.